Hey there, I'm Lance and I'm a gamer. And I'm Sam and I'm a non-gamer. We are Love to Hate, where we help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. And today we're taking a look at Gearworks by Peacekeeper Games. Gearworks is a game that's been around for a few years now, and Peacekeeper Games was kind enough to send us a copy of this one. And this is just the sleeve, the box sleeve uh, for the game, so I'm going to set this off to the side now. Uh, but really, this is a game in which you're combining a little bit of like Sudoku here with a steampunk strategy theme to the game here. And really what you'll be doing in this one is trying to play your cards cleverly into a grid so that you earn parts to fulfill other order cards, let's call it. Um, a little bit abstract with this one. Makes more sense when I show it to you down on the table. So why don't we go down to the table and where I'll do that, see, teach you how this game works, and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer. All right, I have Gearworks on the table. Let me show you this Sudoku Steampunk game. Now, with this game, you do have a player mat, and this is an upgraded component, so you may not uh, have a player mat in the game that you play with. And uh, you can play without the player mat, as you're just going to be placing these cards out here in this grid, as you can see, in a 5x5 five five, or a 5x4 grid, uh, or a 4x4 four four grid if you are playing a solo or two player game, as denoted by this icon right here. You won't be playing with this column over here uh, but this player mat is really nice and it helps organize everything in the game you do have these chunky wooden tokens uh, that are going to be a vital part of the game as well as these cardboard tokens that are on the outside edge of the board you do have some cards and you have some lightning bolt wooden pieces these are called sparks we'll come back to what those do here in just a minute now in this game, what you will be doing, you will be playing cards from your hand out to the spots out here in the grid, trying to gain control of, over these tokens that represent the different rows and columns of the playing space to earn these tokens so that you can use them on these contraption cards. In more detail how this game works, you will start the game with a number of gear cards. There will be a number of cards already out on the board at the beginning of every round, and you do play three rounds in this game. Now what you'll be doing is, on your turn, you'll be playing one of these cards from your hand out to one of these spots on the board, or you will pass. So we'll cover those two things in order, the first being playing a card into the grid. Again, you'll have a number of cards in your hand at the beginning of each round, and you'll be playing one, one card from your hand to these spots, uh, trying to gain control of the different columns or rows where you play the card into. Now, there are two rules about where you're allowed to play cards. Each column can only hold one card of each color. So there's a blue card that is already in this column, and so another blue card could not be played to that column, so I could not play this blue five in any of these three spots because we've already got a blue here. Now, as far as the rows go, you cannot play cards out of sequential order, or not sequential necessarily, but out of ascending or descending order. What that means is, is uh, we've got a six right here, and so whatever cards end up being played in this row are going to determine the order of what cards are doing in that row. So for instance, if a five was played right here, well now the numbers are descending. They're starting from big to little, so in other words, we could not not put a lower numbered car, uh, card on this side of the six because now the, the order is out of order. Uh, and that is how the rules are played with that. Now, uh, this can go either way. And so, for instance, I could have put the five there, and now the cards are going in ascending order, five, six, seven, and the cards go all the way up to nine in a three or higher player count game. If you're playing in a one or two player count, then seven is the highest numbered uh, card in the game. So those are the two rules as far as being able to place your cards out here. Again, you can't repeat a same color in a column, and you've either got to go ascending or descending uh, in, the in the numbers as far as the cards go. Now, you can repeat the same number. So in other words, I could have another six here and another six there and even another six here. You can repeat the same number over and over again. You just have to go either higher or lower. Now, 
Now that you understand what those two rules do, what you're trying to do with this game by playing your cards out here is gain control of the different rows or columns. So I'm gonna place my five right here. And having done so, we look at the, the axes here. So this, this uh, C right here, I've played in the column C and I turn this token over and it's got the four different player colors on this token. And so I uh, adjust it to whatever my player color is. Let's say I'm red for instance and I point the red player color towards the column to indicate that I've gained control of this column. And I would do the same over here with the row, turning this column, the one here, to red as well to indicate that I've got control over that row. Now, throughout the course of the game, those are going to change, and other players will be playing cards into rows or columns. So, for instance, if another player plays right here, they will gain control of column D, play, putting it on their color, and they will take row one from me turning it to their color and that's how the game is going to progress throughout the, the course of a round now uh, again you can choose to pass on your turn so if you don't want to play one of your cards you want to slow play the round for instance you want to see how the board starts to develop and who's trying to gain what rows or columns you can pass now if you pass though you are passed for the rest of the round unless you spend a spark if you spend a spark on your turn, you can re-enter the round and then be able to do whatever action you want to do. And you could pass on a future turn and then spend another spark on another turn and re-enter the round. You can do that multiple times. The catch is that if everybody in the round has passed, then the round is over and you won't be allowed to then re-enter the round because everybody is out of the round. So you do have to be careful about when you do that if you're confident that there are going to be at least one other player that is continuing with the round otherwise the round is going to end. Now, there are a few other rules about when you're playing cards out here and ways that you earn sparks. So there's a rule called tinkering, and what that means is, is when I play a card, so for instance, let's say I play this five right here, you're going to look at whatever card is closest in the cardinal direction. So the closest card uh, going up from the card I just played is this six, and uh, there's not a card going to the right or a card going down, but there is this one over here to the left. And so if there are two cards that are closest in the cardinal directions of the card that I just played, that their numbers either both add up or subtract and equal the number of the card that I just played, then I've successfully tinkered. So in other words, this six minus this one equals five, which is what I just played. So I tinkered and I got a spark. So there is gonna be a little bit of addition or subtraction in tinkering and playing cards uh, cleverly to earn these spark pieces. Now, you can earn spark by also discarding any two cards from your hand to the discard pile and you would earn spark when you do that as well, but you're limiting the number of cards that you have in hand and uh, if you don't have any cards, then you're going to have to pass and be out of the round for the rest of the, that round anyhow. Now, you can also spend Spark to play cards on top of other cards that are already out here on the board. Uh, if you spend two, car, uh, two Spark, excuse me, uh, you will then be able to do what I just talked about there, uh, and that is allowing you to play on top of spaces that already have cards. You do still have to respect the same rules as far as ascending or descending and whether there's the same color in that column, but that will let you be able to gain control of that row or column. Now, the whole idea here is that at the end of the round, when everybody's passed, you'll look and see which players control which rows or columns and award those players the pieces that match for those row rows and columns. And what you're using those pieces for are trying to fulfill these contraption cards. You can see here, this one requires part C and part three. And so if I had gathered those two parts in the same round, then I could spend them on this card and that would complete that contraption. And when you complete contraptions, they're gonna get you nine points at the end of the game. If I only had one piece, then I'm only gonna get four points at the end of the game. There, there's not the ability to put uh, complete uh, to partially complete it on one round and then hold on to it for the next round and get the other piece to use in the next round. You have to do these cards in one round. So if I don't have both pieces in, in the round that I'm uh, starting it, then I, I'm stuck with only partially completing it for four points. Now, if I did get a part 
that doesn't go to any of my contraption cards. I do also have to spend that for two po uh, points. I'm not going to be allowed to keep this for the next round to use on a future uh, contraption card. So uh, the, the parts you gain have to be used in that round, in other words. Uh, and that's how you're getting the bulk majority of your points by completing these contraption cards or just earning these, uh, these tokens that aren't used for any contraption cards. At the end of the game, you will receive one extra point for every spark that you have. I did forget to mention that you can spend two sparks on your turn to gain more contraption cards. Otherwise, you will only be getting contraption cards at the beginning of every round. Uh, and so that limits the number of ways that you can earn points. So you may want to spend your, your spark to get more cards, in other words. Uh, you, you will count up points at the end of three rounds, and whoever has the most is going to be the winner. And that is how you play Gearworks. Now, I do also want to point out that you do have special abilities on your uh, character cards that you start the game with that you can spend once per round, breaking some of the rules that we discussed. Uh, and that's kind of a modular thing. You don't have to play with that if you don't want to. But if you know the rules in your experience, you can add that. So there you have it. Now let's go back up top and share our thoughts on this one. And we're back, and now we're going to share our thoughts on Gearworks from a gamer and non-gamer's perspective. So Sam, uh, we did get the play map that also goes along with this game, and again, we do want to thank Peacekeeper Games for sending us that play map as well, uh, which you got to see there in the rules portion of the video. Uh, but I thought this game looked really interesting out on the table, has nice artwork, really great theming with that steampunk uh, feel and the gears and the you know just the the weird vibes you get from steampunk a little bit uh, but what did you feel like when you saw this out on the table yeah I mean I, once Lance said kind of uh, explained what he meant by Sudoku feel it, it is like that you know only being able to place things in a certain way um, and I I really liked it I mean it's it's very simple but at the same time it is a is a thank you one you have to plan your moves yeah. in advance yeah, it's 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 got deceivingly good strategy and depth to it, right? Yeah. Because on the surface, it would sort of seem like okay, Sudoku. I can't play certain numbers here and, and repeat certain things there, right? Like, and that is a, the case in this game. But you do have some rules that sort of let you bend those rules yeah. or break them, even in some instances, and. That's a fun thing, right? Because you can start to <coughs> maybe think what the other players are going to be doing on their turns because of how the board looks, right? And you might sort of start guessing, okay, I think they're going for these different parts. Yeah. But then somebody th does something that throws you for a well, loop. Well, it doesn't help that when we first played this game, I thought that once you got those, they uh -huh. were yours. <laughs> oh, I no, you can lose I them. didn't tell Lance that. <laughs> and so the first round, I was like, well, crap, I didn't get anything I needed because he got it after me. Yeah. And so you can turn that oh, yeah. tile to who currently has it and... Make sure you read all the rules. <laughs> uh, but no, that, that's where that passing yeah. right comes into play with the game. It can be really fun, right? Because I might strategically pass yeah. and want to slow play that to see how it develops a little bit better. Yeah. And then I make my move, right? But then you always take the risk when you do that. Because yeah. if everybody passes, then the, the round's over and then you're, you're, you know, yeah. you're in a bad place. So I think there's some really interesting things built into the game that can kind of create that tension uh, and, and make for interesting decisions as the game starts to unfold and develop. Uh, for you as a non-gamer, when you're playing a game that's sort of like that, that's got those, uh, those tense moments where somebody can make something happen and, and turn the game on a dime, what's that like for you as a non-gamer? It's, it's frustrating. That's not my favorite thing. I like to, this is what I did, this is what I get. I get to keep that. Sure. So it's almost like you're taking something from me even though I didn't quite have it yet. Sure. And that can be frustrating. So I do think you need to play with the right people. Yeah. That's the reason why I wanted to ask her that question because I do think that that is something that you could experience it's, playing it, with certain non-gamers. It, it, it's not as, as intense as it could be with other games. It's not too bad of a take that or anything like that, but it's there. Yeah. And that feeling of, Man, yeah, is there. Now, I will say what this game does have to kind of make up for that, if that's even something that it needs to be made up for, uh, is that you do still get the points for the parts that you've gathered that may not 
work for the different machines that you're building in that particular round. Or if they do work for that, then at least you're getting more points than just the single point for having a part that wasn't good for anything, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, again, watch the rules portion of the video and that would make more sense to you. So you are still getting rewarded, you're just maybe not getting the maximum use out of the parts if you were to get the exact ones you need. So uh, just something to think about with this one. Okay, so let's get to pros and cons here for Gearworks. What for you stands out in a good way with this one? I mean, I think just the, the main play... Mechanic, mechanic of Sudoku. Yes, I really liked that. Okay. I really liked figuring out, okay, where where can this go? What is it going to get me? Um, and that it, it was thinky without being too impossible. And so I think it's a good line for non-gamers. Yeah, good little level of depth yeah. uh, that can work well for both gamers and non-gamers. Yeah. I would agree with that. Uh, I like the, the look of the game. I think it looks really great out on the table. Has a nice, clean, polished feel to it, especially if you have that play mat, too. That's a good yeah. addition to it. Uh, 30 to 45 minutes, which I think is the perfect sweet spot for family weight games, yeah. right? Like that's that's the right amount of time that you really want with this one. Uh, you can solo it. Um, that's not something that we did with this particular one, but it is soloable, so you do have that being a pro for it. Uh, anything about it that maybe doesn't work so great? Um, I think sometimes, and, and I don't even know if this would be considered a con, it's more probably just you need to be very observant. Sometimes I, I wouldn't see that Lance had turned one of those tiles, okay. and so I'm still planning in my head, I'm getting that. You, so you really do need to pay a lot of attention to what your opponent is doing. Okay. Um, so again, not necessarily a con, just... It's the type of game that it is, right? Yeah. Like it is a, it, you got to be very observable and and play the whole field, right? Like you can't have just a, that's the part I need, so I'm gonna play this card and get that. And part, that's right? very like, much the type of player yeah. I am. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do have. This is the type of game that you do have to think ahead three, four turns in advance, yeah. right? Because do you slow play, right? We going back to that slow play so that you can see the field develop a little bit better to know, okay, I've got a pretty good shot. If I play this card now, I'll get the things that I need, yeah. right? That's this type of game. And you just gotta know that going into it, that the person you're playing with, are they gonna like that type of game? Yeah. Because I don't know that everybody likes that type of game, so. Okay, so let's get to scores here for gear work. Scale of one to 10, love to hate. Where's this one coming at? I thought I think it's a solid game, and I think there is definitely a niche of people that would enjoy this. And I, I mean, I still, I think the Sudoku aspect of it is really good. I'd probably give it a six point eight. Okay, six point eight, I think, is a fair score, and it's not too far from where I'm coming in, on, coming in at with it. Uh, I'm gonna give it a seven. I think this is a solid seven for me. Which for me, what a seven means is it's a game that I would absolutely like to have in my collection. It might even be a game that I would go out and buy. Um, it's going to be a game that if you ask to play it, I'd be happy to play it with you mm -hmm. because, again, it's in my collection, so I must enjoy playing it. Uh, it's not maybe the game that knocks it out of the park 100% of the time that I feel like everybody's going to enjoy. Specific. It's meant for, yeah, exactly, a specific time and place, and if I'm playing with the right type of people, it, that's going to be a good game for them. Yeah. So. Uh, the game is Gearworks. It is from Peacekeeper Games. Leave us some comments down below. Let us know what you think about this game. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.